Hi friends, this is Terry Squires with today's Nashville This Is Faith. I sat down with our very own Katie Farrell from Dashing Dish. And you know what? She shared her journey through her body image and eating disorder and how God transformed her life. And now she's reaching millions with her new television show, Dashing Dish. You won't want to miss this episode. The world will tell you lies about who you are, but God's word is true. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Founder in the face of Dashing Dish, Katie Farrell's healthy lifestyle website and cooking television show is designed to nourish readers' minds, bodies, and souls. A registered nurse, author, blogger, healthy lifestyle advocate, and mother, Katie launched Dashing Dish to teach women across the country to end the misconception about healthy eating. This was the result of her own personal struggle in her younger years, anorexia. This is her story. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith. Katie, I am so excited. Finally, I get to meet you. Thank you for inviting me in your beautiful home and welcome to Nashville. Well, thank you. We love it here so far. You've been here how long now? Um, so it's been just about eight months which is hard to believe. It feels like it's been a week. <laughs> and it took you some convincing, but tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so my husband wanted to move to Tennessee for 10 years. So and 10 you're years, from Michigan. Yes. 10 years ago, he said, you know, I went to a design conference, and when I went to Tennessee, I felt like we were supposed to live there. And I said, well, you're going to have to really pray that God changes my heart because I don't feel that same prompting. And my entire family lived in Michigan. I was born and raised there. So it was not easy for me to picture leaving. But you, you couldn't leave that snow. <laughs> you know, that's, I think, what did me in. But two years ago, that's when God really started to work on my heart. And I really started to feel a nudge to start to look outside of Michigan. And so I told my husband, I'll go on one trip with you. Don't get your hopes up. We'll take a little trip to Tennessee and we'll just look. And so that trip was what started to kind of break down the walls in my heart and allow God to really work and speak to me about moving here as well. Well, how do you like it? Well, we love it. Um, you know, I think better weather, <laughs> a lot of perks to moving more south. But um, the people are so warm we are. and yeah. loving here. And it has just been so wonderful. And it definitely helps being able to go outside in the middle of March with a little boy, especially. I have a one-year-old son that wants to just be outside all the time. So it's been wonderful to be here. A new state, new home new babies. I mean, God is really moving in your life. Uh, take me back a little bit up to your childhood. You were raised in Michigan and, and you married your, is it your high school sweetheart? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I was born and raised in Michigan and we did take a quick diversion. We moved to Wisconsin for about two years and then we came back to Michigan. So that was my only time being outside of Michigan. And, we met, my husband and I met when we were 15 and 16 years old, and it was really right when I moved back to Michigan. And at first we were just friends, and our friendship quickly grew into a relationship. And yeah, we started dating, and really the rest is history. We've been married for 14 years now. 14 years. Did you go off to college, or do you? Well, I went to college, I went to nursing school, uh, but I went at home, like I lived at home, and he went to a business school and ended up 
dropping out and just starting a business. He felt so strong that he was supposed to start a business. And little did we know that that was the start of really an unfolding of what God was going to do in our lives with all kinds of businesses from there on out. Um, so it ended up being a really good thing for both of us. You are very busy. We both, are, we're actually like family, both on Cornerstone Television Network. And God has really done amazing things in your life. Tell me about how you got there and what you're doing. I'm not going to announce it yet, but um, you're really doing amazing things and helping so many people. Well, really, Dashing Dish is so much more than I ever imagined it would become. And really a big part of that is because I gave God my yes. I was a nurse and I worked as a nurse for almost a year as a labor and delivery nurse. And that was my dream job. So I went to nursing school, you can imagine, for five years worked I'm a nurse so too. hard. Yes. yes. <laughs> and so I thought that would be my whole future. And I thought I would work on that floor for the rest of my life. But God had other plans. And I remember uh, just feeling this prompting in my heart to leave my nursing job for this career that I really didn't even know what it would look like. And it was just in its very infant stages, but I just knew that I knew that God was calling me to lay down what I knew of my future and say yes to what he was calling me to. And so that was 12 years ago that I decided to pursue Dashing Dish full-time. And God has done more than I could ask, think, or imagine through it. So tell me about Dashing Dish. When I started Dashing Dish, I really just started it as kind of a side hobby. Like I was saying, I worked full time as a nurse. Is it Was it a blog? It or? was. Okay. And my husband was a graphic designer and he said, hey, you know, you should really start to share these recipes with your nursing crew because everybody kept asking, hey, what, can I have the recipe for these cupcakes? And I would make all kinds of healthier versions of baked goods and bring them to work. And so, um, so many people were requesting the recipes. He said, let's put this on a website. At that time, there was no Pinterest. There was nowhere that people were posting recipes. There were no food blogs. It didn't exist. So I was like, who would want a you know, recipe from a website? But okay. So I just said, let's do it. And I started sharing my recipes with just my nursing crew. And people started sharing them. And they the word spread. And over time, people were talking about Dashing Dish and sharing it with other people. And that's really where it started. So was your husband all on board with you quitting nursing and doing this full time? He was always telling me, pursue what's in your heart, Katie. He said, what is God putting in your heart? Whatever that is, pursue that. And there was a time when I really struggled laying down nursing because again, that's what made sense to my head. It was what made sense in the long-term picture as well. But when I really searched the depths of my heart, I felt such peace and I felt such clarity. And I did get wise counsel. I asked my parents who I really look up to and I said, hey, what do you guys think about this? And you know, my parents even at the time, even though it didn't quite make sense, we couldn't see the big picture. They said, you know, if you really feel peace in your heart that this is where God's calling you, then what's the worst that could happen? You know, you, you still have your nursing degree. You could always pursue a different path or avenue in nursing, um, but just give it a shot, give it a try. And then shortly after I quit my nursing job, a uh, cookbook publisher came to me and said, hey, we love what you're doing. Would you like to write a cookbook? And that was kind of really the start of things kind of taking off from there. So your cookbook, Dashing Dish, is mm -hmm. that the name of it? Yeah. Yeah. So my cookbook, I wrote, um, gosh, I think that was 10 years ago. And then that kind of opened the door to me writing a devotional and also a book called Nourish that is my testimony and just kind of how God brought me through my journey to get to where I am today. You know, and we're going to talk about that when we come back because God took you through a, a, a series of trials that a lot of women deal with and uh, he delivered you from it and we're going to talk about it when we come back. Katie, there is a reason why God wanted you to start Dashing Dish to help other women. 
because you had a struggle of your own. Can you share it with me? Yeah, so when I was 14 years old, it actually was right when we moved to our new town in Wisconsin. And we were starting a new school. And I remember that very first day of school, a boy came up to me and he handed me a crumpled up piece of paper and he ran off. And I thought maybe it was a love note or, you know, anything like that when you're 14 years old. But instead I opened it up and it was a really grotesque, terrible picture. And it said, this is what you look like. And so in that moment, I started to see my body for the very first time. And before that, I feel like I was totally oblivious, carefree, just a young girl, just enjoying life. And my eyes were just suddenly opened in the worst way to see my body in a way that it really wasn't even truth. I was a very fit, healthy young girl, a cheerleader, and suddenly I started to take on anything and everything that I heard about someone and what they said about a diet. So I heard that you shouldn't eat bread because it makes you lose weight. So I cut out all bread. And I just started doing all these different little things that I had heard maybe my mom or my aunt or other people talk about, you know, to lose weight. And so uh, little by little, I started to lose weight. And at first no one noticed until one day my mom noticed that my cheerleading skirt wasn't fitting me anymore. And she said, Katie, I'm really worried about you. I should take you to the doctor. And she hadn't noticed any of my food habits had changed because I did a really good job hiding them. And so when we went to the doctor, I, of course, denied anything was wrong. And as time went on, she realized and saw little things that I was doing to hide food and just different things that were kind of sneaky because I was keeping it all a secret. And What I really now realize is that I had fallen into anorexia. That went on for a few years until suddenly I really felt like I couldn't keep that up anymore. And I remember thinking, hmm, I wonder if there was a different way that I could control my weight, which then led to bulimia. So I was bulimic for um, at least five years. And then on my birthday, One day, my sister, well, both of my sisters heard me in the bathroom. And I had just eaten my birthday cake, and I was getting rid of it. And my sisters said, hey, Katie, we need to talk to you upstairs. And so they called me upstairs, and they said, we know what you're doing. And tears started to stream down their face. And they said, you can't live like this anymore because it's not just hurting you, it's hurting us as well. And I started crying with them and it was kind of like my eyes were open to see that I all this time was really hurting myself. And I didn't see it that way. I really convinced myself that I was just controlling my weight. Did your mom and dad know about this or? Well, so my mom had really strong suspicions, um, but I don't think she ever fully realized or knew. She did take me, I remember, to a counselor a few times, and the counselor was like, well, you just need to eat a burger. (laughs) You know, just very simple solutions in his mind, but it never was something that got to the heart of the issue. So what happened after you had the confrontation with your sisters? So that night we prayed together on the bed, And I remember, as we're all sitting there holding hands, that God very gently spoke to my heart and said, Katie, I'm setting your feet upon a solid rock. And I remember feeling like I was truly in mud and mire and just trying to grapple my way through. And I remember just having this vision of how he took me and he picked me up and he set me on a rock. And so in that moment, something broke, that prayer and that just vision and that acceptance of surrender and God, this is my body, my life is yours. Truly laying it down, something broke off of me and I never desired to go down that path again. And so that was truly closing a door where God just supernaturally did a work in my heart, but I had so much in my mind that still needed to be healed. And so that was really the start of my healing journey. So you were now dating your husband in high school. Did you, were you able to discuss it with him? Did he have any idea or did your friends? You know, I don't think he really understood. I think it's really hard for people to understand really what's going on with eating disorders. Like I said, even the counselor just was trying to give me a 
solution that was very practical, like just eat more. But really eating disorders is very much a heart issue and also in your mind. It's really not so much about food. It's really about what's going on in the heart. And so that's an area that truly God is the one that goes in and he's the only one that can heal our hearts. And then renewing our minds is something that it can only be done by the word of God. And I remember laying on my bed, I was crying one day shortly after we prayed that prayer. And I said, God, how do I get free in my mind? I know I'm not thinking the way I'm supposed to be thinking still. And I open up to Romans 12, one and two, and it talks about submitting your body, submitting your life, submitting everything to God, and then no longer conforming to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And that is how you'll know God's good, pleasing and perfect will for your life. So I said, okay, so this is like a roadmap. And I didn't even realize it at the time, but God was just showing me, you need to submit, surrender to me, and then allow my word to show you the way to go. And that's what I did. And it truly, that was the beginning of where the change took place in my mind. Then what happened after that? Well, so I started bringing my Bible with me everywhere. I, again, I didn't know exactly what that meant, but I just knew that the answer was in the Word of God. So I was in nursing school at the time, and when I was supposed to be studying for tests, <laughs> I was in, in my car reading my Bible. And I was like, God, I, I just, I want to know what your will is for my life. I want to know what your plan is because it's, I'm going my own way and it's definitely not the right way. I've been messing everything up. So I started to pursue God with everything in me, all my heart. That was really where my change and transformation truly took place. So were you a uh, Christian? How old were you when you gave your life to the Lord? I think I was five years old when I gave my life to the Lord. Um, And so since I was a young girl, I, I truly knew Jesus as my savior, but I didn't really surrender everything to him until I was in my early 20s. So from there, God has opened up a whole new ministry for you. And we're gonna talk about more of Dashing Dish and what God is doing in your life uh, when we come back. Katie, I love how God takes our struggles and turns them into a ministry that gives him glory. Let's talk a little bit more about Dashing Dish and and your encouragement to others and, and what makes it so different. Well, Dashing Dish is not just a place where I share recipes, but uh, I actually started sharing my testimony. And I think that that was really what led it to become what it is today, which is really is a ministry, you know, where people, especially women, can heal not just their relationship with food, but also their bodies. Because a lot of times women, just because of our culture and and all of the different demands on women, uh, women oftentimes get into a place that's really just not healthy in their mind about how they feel about their bodies and how they treat their bodies. And so it really is a place where I, I try and bring God into everything because he's the healer, like I said, of our hearts. And so I always say it's a place where you can find food and then also (laughs) some encouragement from the Lord. Well, I think it's interesting too that you said that this little boy gave you this picture. You know, I know of so many stories of just, it might just be one negative comment about you or Uh, I know of one person that somebody um, made a negative comment about her in a, she was a swimmer and she never wanted to swim again. Mm. And I think sometimes we take those negative comments and just take them to heart. What would you say to somebody, you know, listening to you now and people are just throwing those negative comments to her? Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, I definitely agree with you. I see even my daughter who's six years old is being impacted by words at school. And so it starts really at a very early age when we start to take those words that people say about us and we internalize them. But one of the things that my husband and I are really working to do, and this is what I would tell anybody, 
it's so important to find your identity and your worth and what God says about you. He's the only one that never changes. And he's the only one that really knows who we are because he created us. So we can trust him and take him at his word that whatever he calls us, whatever he says about us, that is the truth. And, you know, sometimes it's easy to believe people because, you know, we're all relational beings and we want to be accepted. But when we find our acceptance, our value, our identity in what God says, we, that's when we truly will have a foundation that can't be crumbled underneath us. You know, and I think it's interesting, too, that, you know, our weaknesses are his strengths. Mm. He takes what we were talking earlier about how shy you were. And I was very shy. And look at us now. Yeah. Uh, we're both on Cornerstone Television Network and we're sharing each other's faith and food. Tell me a little bit about your healthy recipes. Well, my recipes are pretty unique in the fact that I really don't use any sugar. I don't use any flour. I don't use anything that's like a white processed ingredient because a lot of times those are man-made foods that all the nutrition is kind of sucked out of them. And we have a lot of food on our shelves today that really don't have nutritional value because, you know, they can sit on shelves longer. So it's, it's a good thing for the people that make them. They, they can sit there for longer. But it's not how God designed food to be, especially when it comes to nourishing our bodies. And so all my recipes, I really try and take God-made foods, foods that God intended for us to eat, and make recipes that we really do enjoy and crave. So I have healthy cookies and brownies and pizza and burgers on my site. It's not just the bland, boring chicken and broccoli that most people think of when you think of healthy eating. And so I think that's what really sets Dashing Dish apart. You will look at my recipe page and you'll think, these can't be healthy. But indeed, I really do uh, try and make everything using foods that are truly nutritious. Like flour, you say you don't use flour? I don't use white flour. So I use oat flour or almond flour. So you know, old fashioned oats, like what we all grew up eating our oatmeal because mom told us it was good for us. You just take those and you make a flour just by putting them in your blender. And almond flour, so just almonds. So very nutritious ingredients and you can still bake with them just like regular baking, or your favorite baked goods. Well, Katie, how did you start creating your recipes? Well, that is a very good question. I actually grew up in a home where my mom, and she'll be the first person to tell you this, she did not like to cook. And so I didn't learn how most people would learn from your mom or from someone in your family. I literally, I always say, God taught me how to cook. So I always say, the Holy Spirit taught me. <laughs> he came alongside me in the kitchen, and God really worked with me and got me to start to create recipes just by learning about food. And I always think back to when I was in nursing school, and I think, why didn't I see it then? Because that was when my love for cooking started to come about. I remember when I should have been studying for one of my nursing exams, I would kind of retreat and go into the kitchen to relieve some stress, and I would start to cook. I also think that part of what God was doing in me in that time was he was healing the places in my heart as I learned to cook. Because remember, I was really fearful of food and a lot of different types of food made me very scared. And so as I got in the kitchen and started to learn, hey, food can be nourishing. It's not just a bad or a good thing. It actually can heal our bodies. And so learning how to use food as a enjoyment and something that also nourished my body, I started to see it as a good thing rather than this negative thing that I was scared of. So God did a healing work in my heart as well as really got me in the kitchen learning how to make recipes, I believe, to help other people, you know, as well. I think it is scary for people who have been through anorexia or bulimia to start, you know, cooking. Have you ever had any issues of going back? What I said, uh, what I mentioned about that prayer that we had, me and my sisters, 
like I said, something just miraculously took place in my heart that day. And so that really was the end of that journey. It was like God literally picked me up out of that deep pit and he put my feet upon a rock. And so I never looked back. I never had that desire to go down that road again, but there definitely are temptations. And I feel like once we've been tempted in an area and we've given in, you know, it's, it's something that we have to be very aware of. And so that was something that I, even to this day, I always make sure that my mind is going in the direction of the truth. And especially in the area of my body and how I take care of my body, you know, I'm always just giving myself checks in my thinking how, what God says about me. And as long as I am, as long as I'm agreeing with God, I know I'm walking in the truth. Somebody's listening to you right now. What would you say to her? Well, if there's a woman out there that is in the same shoes that I had walked in, I would say, you know, I understand how scary it can be to think about walking any other way than what you are right now, because it really does become this comfortable place. And it's so easy to get settled into your habits and what you think is healthy and good for you. But deep down, everybody that has ever struggled with an eating disorder knows that they're not walking in freedom. And there is a place of freedom, and that's Jesus. And he is truly the only way that we can find true and lasting freedom in our lives. And, you know, there are people that can help. There are counselors, there are doctors that can help us navigate that. But the true heart freedom only comes from Jesus. And so let him in. All you have to do, like I tell my six-year-old, is just mention his name. Just call out to him and ask him. It can be the most simple prayer. Jesus, help me to walk in the freedom that you've provided for me. And he will. He'll come right to your rescue, and he'll help you walk out that freedom. Katie, thank you for having me in your beautiful home. Where can people find your recipes? Well, I have a website, dashingdish.com, or an app. So if you have an Android or an Apple phone, you can just download the app. So there's a few different places, and we make it super easy to find. Well, thank you again, Katie. It's so nice sitting down with you, and I can't wait to check out your recipes. My friend, are you struggling with your body image? The Lord wants you to remember that He is with you and your body is a living temple for Him. Give Him the honor and glory. This is today's Nashville. This is Faith.